Given its importance, we are investing to raise the agriculture sector's growth rate from the current 5% to 10% by 2030, and by extension, increase productivity and uplift communities. We have launched a program called Building a Better Tomorrow, where the government has supported women and youth with training and access to land for modern farming, and has facilitated the private sector to contribute finance, imports, and value addition of the agricultural outputs. We thank the World Bank and other partners for their support to this program. Distinguished delegates, while we celebrate these achievements, the magnitude of the work that lies ahead is not lost on us. From climate change, pandemics, to economic shocks, the demands on AIDA are as substantial as they have ever been. AIDA 20 cycle was the largest replenishment in AIDA's history. As such, it is critical that we forge an, an ambitious path ahead to, co to complete the current cycle. However, the success of this mid-term mid review lies not just in effectively implementing the remainder of AIDA 20, but crucially in laying the foundation for an equally ambitious AIDA 21 replenish, replenish, replenishment with additional contribution to increase support to either countries. Let's remind ourselves that while Sub-Saharan Africa has experienced periods of economic growth contributing to increase in per capita income and, and poverty reduction, these achievements have not been sufficient. Due to, to the recent global shocks, the growth has fallen short of making a substantial dent in extreme poverty and boosting prosperity. As it stands, the poverty level in the region remains alarmingly high, hovering at 37.6% in 2023. Furthermore, the number of people living in, in deprivation has also increased. Distinguished delegates, I would like to recognize IDA's model of efficiency, which minimizes transaction costs through the scale, concession, and predictability of its financing, and leveraging on each dollar of donor contribution. As such, our plea to the World Bank group and partners is to strengthen support to better ensure either countries achieve the, sustain the sustainable development goals. As we roll out the African continental free trade area to enhance competitiveness and job creation through regional integration and trade, we believe IDA and IFC need to increase support to foster a thriving private sector. Central to this is integrating African business into global value chains and attracting FDIs. This approach demands a blend of finance and risk mitigation, particularly crucial for de-risking investments in IDA economies. To this end, we are convinced that the private sector window will serve as a critical catalyst for private investments. Distinguished delegates, finding and supporting innovative solutions in response to the climate crisis is key towards a greener future. For instance, during the COP28 in Dubai, Tanzania spearheaded the launch of the African Women Clean Cooking Support Program, a gender-responsive energy transition approach in Africa. The program seeks to empower women across Africa through the trans transition to clean fuels and technologies. It will also help us reduce emissions and reduce use of biomass fuels which impact on our environment. Our Excellency Samia Sulu Hassan has committed to champion this agenda along with other heads of states and partners. I believe we need to continue advocating for innovative solutions to guide us towards a more environmentally sustainable future. Distinguished delegates, ladies,